Saracino Modeling Paste. So what is Saracino Modeling Paste? It's kind of like a gum paste, but it contains cocoa butter and you need it to make models out of. I would just use these ones for creating your little figurines, uh, animals, toppers, things that you're gonna make for the tops of your cakes. I personally don't use this particular one for flowers. Some people do, I don't, uh, but they do have their own flower paste as well. But this specifically one is their modeling paste is this one. And they also come in an array of colors too. So if you don't want to dye your own, you can just buy it pre-colored. So the pre-colored stuff comes in two different size packs, a 250 gram pack and a kilogram pack. The white one comes in three different sizes. So you can get this in 250 grams, a kilogram, and it also comes in large five kilogram pots as well, guys, is this one, which is great if you like to color your own paste and use a lot of it. You might find when yours arrives that you see a little bit of marbling in it. This is the cocoa butter. And once you start kneading it, that should start to disappear. You also might find that you get it with cracks. Again, don't panic. This isn't anything to be concerned about. You will find it's different to use depending on whether you've got hot hands or cold hands. And also it's gonna be a little bit different to use in cold temperatures to what it is in hot temperatures. So let's have a little bit of a look at this paste now and see how it performs. When it's slightly warmer, it's gonna be a little bit softer, but generally, it's pretty hard to begin with, guys. In warmer weather, it's gonna be slightly softer, but still hard. In cold weather, it's gonna be really hard. If the paste were too soft, what you would making, such as figures, wouldn't keep their shape and they would sink and squash. The paste can be hard to break off and to cut. So in cold weather, it's gonna be even harder to cut this stuff. If you find it easier, you can pop this in the microwave to heat it up, soften it before you cut it, or you can cut it in small pieces and put the small pieces in the microwave. It just can be a little bit easier to knead and to cut once it's been microwaved. But for small pieces, only put them in there for like five seconds at a time. If you're gonna microwave a larger bit, again, I'd probably start with five seconds, see how soft it is, then put it in again for another five seconds if needed. It's made from cocoa butter as well, guys. So if you overheat this, it will go really soft. So just be careful of that, but it will go back to normal again once you've let it cool and go back to room temperature. So you will find it's a little bit crumbly sometimes when you begin. I'm gonna knead it till it becomes nice and smooth, almost like a chewing gum consistency. So I'm gonna try and show what it looks like at first. As you begin to knead it, it will become smoother. If you break it into small pieces and knead it, guys, it's gonna be easier for you. Those with hot hands are gonna find it softens way quicker. Those with cold hands, like me, you might have to stick it in the microwave just for that five seconds. Depending on which color paste you choose, sometimes they're a little bit harder to knead than others. I tend to find the black one is a much harder color and I almost always need to microwave that a little bit. The rose beige, generally a softer color, so I don't always need to microwave this one should look like this. If it's still got any hard lumps in it or it's crumbling, then you need to knead it a little bit longer. If you have hot hands, you might find it's quite sticky. Just put a small amount of either corn flour or rice flour just on your hands, just for while you're working with it. Try not to mix it into the paste too much, just have a layer on your hands to stop it sticking. So you might find when you first start working with it that it's a little bit soft and that you might have to leave this to one side for a short period of time to let it start to firm up so it's a little bit easier to work with. If your paste is really soft and really quite melted because you've got hot hands, you can pop it in the fridge just for five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, not for too long just till it starts to firm up and then you can rework it again. Just makes it a little bit easier than trying to work with it when it's really hot. So it's been sat for 10 minutes, so it's started to firm up, but it's still soft enough for me to use and I can re-manipulate it, knead it again if it has firmed up too much. And you can then turn this into a beautiful creation. If I don't like the shape of something, I can amend it as I'm working on it, as long as it's not had too long to dry. I can sometimes come back to my figures the following day and still work on them. I just sometimes need to warm the paste a tiny bit with my fingers first. The models you make with this modeling paste can last for years as long as they're kept in the right conditions and not subject to strong changes in temperature. 
when you're putting it away, you're not using it, it's best to get rid of all these sharp edges because these are the bits that are gonna want to go dry and crusty once you put them away for any period of time. So you want to start by kneading them into a ball. And we're gonna place it into a plastic bag. Make sure there's no air in there. And seal that up. Don't keep it in a refrigerator, guys. The cold will make it go damp and it needs to stay dry. But you can stick it in the refrigerator for just 10 minutes just to help firm it up, but not for storing it in. What can you use to color your modeling paste? Powder or gel colors are recommended for coloring your modeling paste. They won't alter the structure of the product and those supplied by Saracino provide the perfect coloring with just the minimum amount used. Before you do add color, I would advise kneading your paste first rather than adding the color while it's still crumbly. It can get sticky when you color in, so just put that corn flour back on your hands. Remember, if it's too soft to use straight away, just pop to one side and let it rest for 10 minutes or longer if needed. So Saracino do have their own brand of powder and gel colors that you can use uh, to color your white modeling paste. You can use this in any fondant as well, or any other modeling paste. You don't have to use the Saratino brand, you can use any brand of the powders and the gel colors too, and that will work absolutely fine in your modeling paste. So some of the other questions we get asked by you guys about the Saratino modeling paste is, how do you manage in hot weather? I mean, that's difficult with all different pastes, but specifically the Saracino modeling paste contains cocoa butter, which is heat sensitive. So the hotter it is, the harder it is to work with it. Now we're lucky here in the UK in that we don't get a huge amount of really hot weather, but when it is, it can be very difficult. So my tips for working with it in hot weather are to try and avoid, if you can, as much as possible, working with it during the day. See if you can wait while it cools down on the evening and you're gonna find you get a much better result. Also, if you don't have the option and you really have to work on it during the day when it's hot, you can add some CMC or some Tylos to it. It will help it firm up. Generally, you don't need to add it to this, but in hot weather, it can sometimes help a little bit just to try and speed up that firming up process. Or you can pop it in the fridge, like I say, for 10 minutes just to get it a bit firmer. Don't leave it in the fridge for too long though, because when you get it out, it will get wet and sticky because of the condensation that forms when it's gone from being really cold in your fridge to really warm in the weather outside. Don't use too much of this in it because it will harden your paste, but not immediately. So you probably won't notice it until a little bit later in the day. And when you try using it again, you might find it's a little bit too tough to manipulate. So some of you guys have asked, can this modeling paste be used for covering cakes? Well. It is designed for making models with, so it's a bit more expensive than using like ready to roll icing or fondant. You can cover your cake with it though, if you want to. It doesn't set super hard, so it's easy to still cut through it. I would say if you're gonna use it for covering a cake, maybe use it for something more like a sculpted shaped cake, where it's beneficial to have something that's quite sort of elastic-y and goes over the shape without tearing, which that will do. I tend to use it more for models. You can also mix it in with your fondant if you want, which will firm up your fondant a little bit more. Another thing you guys sometimes message us with is it's got greasy. It's got really shiny and greasy. That is the cocoa butter that's melted. So when it gets quite hot, I think above like 32, 33 degrees, the cocoa butter melts quite a lot and it becomes quite oily and you will see that. And it can sometimes, especially if you've not even been using it and it's in the pack, you've left that in the sunshine, but remember guys, don't just leave it in the sun, put it in like a dry, cool cupboard or something out the way where the sun's not directly on it. But the sun or a lot of heat can separate that cocoa butter from the modeling paste and you'll see it'll be like all sort of wet and greasy looking. That will dry out and that's fine, you can still use it. But what you will find is that sometimes the cocoa butter can dry separate and you end up with like hard white bit on the top. Just soften it a little bit or if, it, if you've let it re-dry or reset, um, you can just soften it and mix it back in. It should mix back in fine. Um, if you're using it and it's got really greasy, again, remember, just put it to the side, let it cool down a little bit before you reuse it. If it helps, you can even put a fan on it to cool it down too. So you guys can see more of me using the modeling paste on some of our previous Facebook Lives. So if you go to Zoe's Fancy Cakes Facebook page, look in the Lives tab. I use it a lot in there, also on my YouTube channel. You can find many videos where I'm making toppers and things using this. So that might also give you a few more hints and tips for using the Saracino modeling paste. 
I enjoy using it. For me, it works out really good. Um, it can sometimes take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to using a modeling paste with cocoa butter, but I think it's great. And you can always message me with any questions you have about it.